Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Mike from Mobox and we're back with another graphics video tutorial, this time showing you how to do an animated icon. Um, this type of iconography, if that's a word, uh, you know, again, you might not need this for, um, a, you know, something that you're trying to do, but it, you know, it's kind of here to show you kind of some philosophy of, of motion graphics as well as, uh, as maybe some techniques that you will learn along the way. So anyways, let's just jump right in. So let's, I'm um, first gonna pause this so it doesn't kill my uh, render speed. Just gonna, actually I'm gonna expand this. Composition, new comp. I like to make mine square um, for this case only because I'm gonna turn it into an animated GIF and post it on Twitter and on Instagram. Um, but, you know, obviously do whatever you will. So I'm just gonna come here and go to fit. That way it shows me the whole comp. And I'm gonna add just a quick background. Layer, new, solid pretty standard if you don't know that by now then uh, then I don't know what I don't know what I'm gonna be able to do with you so I'm just gonna lock this layer that way I can't grab it and now I'm gonna start creating some shapes so if you come here there's a rounded rectangle tool what's weird is that you could actually create rounded rectangles with the regular rectangle tool um, but anyways the rounded rectangle tool just makes it a little bit easier so I'm gonna give myself some grids here and I'm just gonna create three lines so this is is kind of intended to replicate the hamburger design um, that Google is kind of going for in its uh, in its uh, what's the word uh, material design so that's kind of what we're trying to emulate here there's really no science behind uh, you know behind it but it just kind of looks cool it's a cool effect so I'm going to just open up this rectangle, come into rectangle path and increase the roundness until it's all the way around. You can do whatever it is that you like. Um, so I'm just going to center up the keyframe using my uh, keyframe tool. If you don't have it, you can press Y on the keyboard and drag the center point. Um, but this align tool, if you don't have it, go to windows align. You can just, uh, you just put it right there and I'm just going to center this up into the composition. So it looks pretty small. So I'm just going to hit S on the keyboard and scale that up a bit. That's probably about right, maybe a little bit more. And then I'm just gonna duplicate this twice. Selecting all of them, I'm gonna hit P on the keyboard and uh, a quick way to make it so these are even is to just say, okay, um, the standard one is 960 by 960, so I can go 960 plus 300. And then I can go 960 minus 300. And now they're perfectly spaced out, which just so happens to be fairly large spacing. Maybe even just a tad bit closer. So 960, 1060, 1160, so that's 240. So it's 960 minus 240. All right, so now they're the same. Just doing a little bit of maths. If Just so you know, this is X and this is Y. So that's why I was only changing the Y. So. Now what I wanna do is actually I wanna select this shape and I'm going to right click and go to mask, new mask, and I'm just gonna drag this over. I'm just now I'm gonna duplicate, uh, which one? All right, I'm just gonna rename these by the way. Top, right click, rename, that's bottom. And then this one's the middle obviously. So what you kind of want to do is you want the shapes to go places that they look natural to go to. Um, if you don't know what that means, like I wouldn't want this to go down and this to go this way and have it spin into a, an effect. I think, that, you know, that's not like a natural um, quick, you know, it, it has too much motion. It's going off screen. You don't want that. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have them scale in. You could make them maybe um, fly up and down, but then like gradient out um, to, you know, move the opacity down. So as it falls down, you know, the opacity goes to zero. That might be something you'd want to do, but just make sure it is, it's kind of mirrored. It's very simple and it could just happen in a half of a second. Um, that's what you want. So I'm going to do, I'm just going to select this layer and duplicate it. Plus R on the keyboard and rotate it uh, 180. And I'm gonna select both of these and I'm gonna hit Control D and duplicate them again. So I'm gonna have four middles. You see uh, 
you need four middles. That way one could launch up, one could launch down, one could launch up, one could launch down. So real simple, let's go to one second. And I'm going to move this to the center. From the top and the bottom, I'm gonna move the, the anchor point. What that will do is it means that it will scale from the center, which is what we want. So I'm gonna set a scale keyframe for the top and the bottom. I'm gonna move up half a second, 30 keyframes in a 60 frame per second video. And I'm gonna make that zero in zero. I'm gonna select them both. I'm gonna hit T on the keyboard and I'm gonna make these transparent. If you press U on the keyboard, it pulls up all your keyframes and I'm just gonna line them up. So again, I want these to go to, go to zero. And that one's going the wrong way. Um, I changed the position. <laughs> Didn't wanna do that. So I'm just gonna select these keyframes, delete them, hit S on the keyboard. And uh, if you hit J on the keyboard, it pulls you back to the last keyframe set, which is nice to make sure all your keyframes are nice in line. Nice in line. So that way you don't have to say, ah, oh, well, is, is that on it? Is that on it? What's, what's is on it? Just hit J on the keyboard and it does it for you. I'm just gonna hit zero. So now you can see what we have is the top and the bottom both going to zero. So now what we can do is now we can start adding the rotation to these which means uh, setting the keyframes, hitting the stopwatch, and just kind of getting an idea of, of where, we want the, where we want them to go. So this one will be 180 minus 45. We'll do 180 plus 45. And we'll do 45 and then negative 45. Pretty simple, huh? Not too bad. So you have something that kind of looks like that. What I'm actually gonna do is I'm actually just gonna select all these layers and I'm just kind of thinking, I think they need to like, they need to be a little thicker or something. I'm just gonna move these scales, make sure they're lined up. It's hard to tell if, uh, if the scale worked on these. Gonna press you on the keyboard and pull up all my keyframes make sure i didn't mess anything up yeah that scale looks a lot better it's a little bit nice and a little bit thicker um alternatively i could have just selected all these and just kind of increased the uh the stroke but remember i added the uh <laughs> i added the masks so i would have to then move these masks over also which that just shows you how thick i made them <laughs> uh, but you could do that if you would want you just have to make sure you move the masks. So, you know, we could be done right there. That would be enough. But uh, what I like to do is I always add, like to add a rotation. Um, so layer new, null object. I'm just gonna take all of these layers and marry them to the null object. Oh, forgot the top, I'm gonna marry that one also. While I'm here, I'm just gonna create the motion blur, initiate motion blur on the composition and initiate motion blur on all the layers. So this way, this way you get a little bit of blur. So what I'm gonna do, come here, hit J on the keyboard, R on the keyboard for rotation, J on the keyboard to bounce back, and I'm just gonna give it a 90 degree turn. Obviously this is an X, so you won't be able to even tell. But when you hit play, you can. Selecting all these layer uh, keyframes, I'm just gonna use my motion to, to toolbox. Uh, you can buy it at mountmograph.com. I don't own it, I don't, I'm don't. i not sponsored. Um, I just like to use it. Um, but what it allows you to do is it allows you to mess with the keyframes without going into this thing. So you can see how complicated that would be. That would be almost impossible to do by hand. You can, you could pause the video right now and, and do that. Um, this is the speed graph, but I'm not gonna do that. So now take a look at what we got. See how it, it smooths it out. It's a lot nicer now. And we could even select all these and maybe make them a little bit longer. So now what we could do is we could kind of make this a cycling um, effect by just copying all the keyframes, control C, and then control, that's not what I wanted, control C, control V. Well, that's a pain in the butt. Well, I could just copy and paste them individually, um, which if you don't have this motion toolbox, you can do. 
But if you do have the motion toolbox, you could just select all these keyframes and hit clone. So once you had copied and pasted them all over, what you need to do now is you, you'll see that, that our animation is now messed up. It's just kind of bouncing back and forth. What you want to do is when I select all these keyframes, right click, keyframe assistant, reverse keyframe, select all these layers and make sure they're, they're uh, back to the little diamond shape because basically the smoothing that we did would have been reversed. Now, I mean, you could leave it reversed. You could see what it looks like. And we just take a look. So that doesn't look too bad. I'll just leave it. Um, but what I need to do is I need to come to this uh, to this rotation keyframe and make this uh, 180. So what that will do is it's rotating 90 degrees and then rotating 90 degrees again and then it starts all over again. Very simple. Now I'm just going to select all these keyframes using my, my motion toolbox here and just kind of uh, making sure they all have the same smoothing effect um, as you can see here. And one cool thing that you could do to make it look like this is continuously scaling is that if you press S on the keyboard on this null object, what you can do, so you count one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. So I'm going to come and stop this here. Um, so there's one, two, three, one, two. So I want to stop this one here. Whoops. So what this is, this is the render area. And so basically what I did was I counted the amount of keyframes here, and that's the same amount of keyframes as this section plus this section. So it's going to start at, uh, it's going to, Go back to, it's gonna, okay, let me just stop and explain this easily. What I want to do is I want to scale up and while it's doing this animation, I want to scale back down to the original scale. That way I could scale up again and then scale down when it's spinning. That way it always kind of looks like it's zooming in but it never actually is zooming in very far. So um, at about here, I'm gonna set the a keyframe with the scale at maybe 108. And then here at zero, or not zero, 100. So during that point in time, you can't really tell that it's scaled down too much. And then I'm basically gonna do the exact same. 108, 100. Now here's the tricky part. Because it's gonna it's gonna stop scaling, I need to set a keyframe here and a keyframe there. But it, since I made sure that the keyframes between here is equal to the keyframes here and here, what I can do is I can say okay. So there's one, two, three. So now I come here, one, two, three, and that is the keyframe scale that I need to copy. It's 104.6, whatever, but I could just select it, hit Control C, come over here, Control V, come up here, Control V. I think this keyframe could move over one. Yep, it can. So now you'll see that, that it will look like it's continuously scaling. Now you can kind of tell a little bit that it scales down and that might be because I have this too high. Um, but it also might be because it's too early or it's too late. I'm just going to move it over a couple frames. There you go. Pretty simple. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like. Be sure to subscribe. I hope this helped. I hope you learned something here. I know you probably won't be making a spinning x icon um but if you did enjoy you make sure that you uh follow along i created a facebook page you can go over and like it i'm in the process of creating an instagram page but instagram banned it instantly for some reason and i have no idea why but anyways guys thanks for watching